In the Holy Bible, there is mention of seven angels who stand before God. And according to prophecy, these seven angels will play a significant role at the end of time. They are tasked with bringing forth God's wrath upon the earth. Before delving into the identities and duties of these seven archangels, it is essential to understand the nature of angels themselves. The term angel originates from the Hebrew word mal-ach, meaning messenger. Angels are heavenly beings created as pure spirits, without physical bodies. Their purpose is foremost as servants to God, and we see them throughout Scripture praising and worshipping God. In addition, they serve as messengers carrying God's will to humanity. However, it is crucial to acknowledge that not all angels remain faithful to their divine purpose. Some, led by Satan, rebelled against God, becoming what we know as demons. The Bible outlines a hierarchical structure among angels, often referred to as the hierarchy of angels. This divine order establishes a system of ranks and responsibilities within the angelic realm. It is worth exploring this hierarchy further as it sheds light on the roles and functions of these heavenly beings. You can watch our video on the hierarchy of angels for more information. So, as we delve into the identities and actions of the seven archangels mentioned in prophecy, it is within the context of this intricate heavenly hierarchy that we seek to understand their significance in God's divine purpose and plan. This divine hierarchy is referenced in Joshua chapter 5, where an archangel appears to Joshua, who in a bold challenge requests to know from the divine angel whether he is a friend or enemy to the people of Israel. The heavenly visitor simply replies, Neither. I come as commander of the Lord's army. Interestingly, while the term archangel is not explicitly found in the Old Testament, the role of archangel is hinted at in the book of the prophet Daniel. Here Daniel speaks of the angel Michael as one of the chief princes of heaven, a title that echoes the idea of archangels. In the Greek Septuagint, this is rendered as the great angel. We do find the word archangel appearing in the New Testament. It is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and in the epistle of Jude, where both are referring to the archangel Michael. Now, the concept of seven archangels originates from the Deuterocanonical Book of Tobit, which is included in Roman Catholic and Greek, Russian and Ethiopian Orthodox Bibles. However, this book is excluded in Protestant Bibles. Additionally, many scholars would point to John's book of Revelation as he describes the seven angels standing before God as archangels, those angels who are charged with important roles in the last days. This closely matches the Old Testament where the prophet Zechariah references the seven eyes that survey the earth on behalf of God. Many scholars interpret these seven eyes as symbolic of the seven archangels who stand in God's presence. In the book of Revelation, the seven angels play a pivotal role in the events of the end of time. They serve not only as God's seven eyes surveilling the earth, but also as the bearers of the seven trumpets and the seven bowls of God's wrath. Now who exactly are these seven archangels? Before we delve into that, it's important to heed the warning given by Paul in Colossians. He cautions against being seduced into a form of worship that elevates angels above their rightful place and detracts from the unique position of Jesus as the sole mediator between God and humanity. In the early church, there were Gnostic groups promoting such practices, which Paul admonished as heretical. In fact, you can easily find hundreds if not thousands of videos that place angels in a position of devotion promising to provide divine blessings, protection, or wealth. An unscriptural practice that even Apostle John speaks of in Revelation chapter 22, verses 8 and 9. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Let's begin with the foremost figure on the list, the Archangel Michael. The name Michael derived from Hebrew as Michael, translates to who is like God. This name bears significance due to Michael's pivotal role in confronting Satan during the latter's rebellion against God. Once known as Lucifer, 
the esteemed bearer of light, Satan sought to challenge God's authority and elevate himself to divinity. Michael, the archangel, countered Satan's audacity by questioning, Who is like God? This bold act led God to bestow upon Michael his name. References to Michael can be found in the book of Daniel, the book of Jude, and the book of Revelation. The archangel Michael is often depicted as wearing armor and holding a sword. This depiction is in reference to Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 10, where Michael fights against and casts Satan and his demons out of heaven. Then again in Jude chapter 1, verse 9, where the archangel Michael contends with Satan over the body of Moses. It's important to note that although a powerful archangel, Michael did not rebuke Satan in his own authority. Instead, he requests God's ultimate authority over Satan and simply pronounces, May the Lord rebuke you. In addition, Daniel chapter 12 provides us with a unique role that the archangel Michael plays as the protector of Israel. Next on the list is the archangel Gabriel, whose name in Hebrew means God is my strength. Gabriel is often depicted as a messenger delivering important messages. For instance, he plays a significant role in the annunciation of the birth of both John the Baptist and Jesus in Luke chapter 1. The archangel Gabriel also appears in Daniel chapter 8 through 10. It's here where we see another role archangels play. Gabriel explains to Daniel that he was delayed in coming to him as he was contending with demons. He continues to describe various demons assigned to regions and kingdoms that resisted him. Ultimately, Gabriel prevails, but only after being assisted by the chief prince, Michael the archangel. Daniel chapter 10 verse 13. So, here we see that in addition to messengers, archangels have roles as both protectors of peoples, regions and countries. We also see that demons too are assigned regions. Like in the book of Tobit, angels can take physical form and even eat food, as is clear in Genesis chapter 18 verse 8, where Abraham feeds the three visiting angels milk and curds. Although female angels are popularized in our culture and date back to the Middle Ages in both paintings and sculptures by Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, all accounts of angels in scripture present them exclusively in the masculine form. In addition, even their names direct all their glory back to God as each of their names ends in El, a Hebrew ending referring to God, Michael meaning who is like God, and Gabriel, God is my strength. Beyond these two named archangels, we turn to the book of Revelation for clues about the remaining archangels. Throughout the book of Revelation, the seven angels play a crucial role in executing God's judgment upon the earth and preparing the way for the establishment of his kingdom. Their actions are part of a larger narrative of divine justice and redemption that unfolds during the end times, ultimately leading to the renewal of creation and the restoration of all things in Christ. We see seven archangels appear during the harvest of the earth in Revelation chapter 14 where John sees a vision of the Son of Man seated on a white cloud, accompanied by seven angels holding sickles. These angels are instructed to reap the harvest of the earth, separating the wheat, the righteous, from the chaff, the wicked, in preparation for the final judgment. These seven archangels also appear in Revelation chapter 15, where John sees another vision of seven angels with seven plagues which are tasked with pouring God's plague judgments upon the earth and mankind. These plagues are depicted as both terrifying and awe-inspiring, signaling the completion of God's redemptive plan and the ultimate triumph of good over evil. First, Thessalonians chapter 4 paints a vivid portrait of an unnamed archangel heralding the imminent return of the Lord. With a voice that echoes through the heavens like thunder, the archangel raises his mighty trumpet to his lips, its resounding call piercing heaven and earth. The blast of the trumpet reverberates, heralding the arrival of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Its clarion call cuts through the darkness, awakening the sleeping saints from their earthly slumber. As the sound of the trumpet fills the air, the dead in Christ rise from their graves, their mortal bodies transformed in an instant into incorruptible vessels fit for eternity. With a mighty shout, they rise to meet their Savior in the clouds, their faces radiant with the glory of resurrection. In the vast expanse of the heavenly realm, 
angels move with purpose and grace, fulfilling their divine assignments from the throne of God. Each one embodies the essence of service, wielding their heavenly authority with reverence and devotion. Psalm chapter 91 speaks of the protective role of angels, sent by God to guard his beloved children. In the darkest of nights and the fiercest of battles, these celestial sentinels stand watch, their presence a testament to our Creator's sovereignty and assurance that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Although sent by and empowered by the Almighty, Moses and the people mourned and were distressed when God told them that he would not go with them into the promised land, but would rather send an angel with them. In Exodus chapter 33, we see Moses humbly asking God not to send them if he himself would not go with them. God replies that he will do as Moses asks and go with them. Hebrews chapter 1 reveals angels as ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation. With tireless dedication, they attend to the needs of God's people, offering comfort, guidance, and encouragement in times of trial. While not all ministering is visible as we see in 1 Kings where an angel feeds Elijah, most of us will never realize this side of eternity the unseen ministering God's angels provide us in times of need. Among their roles, these angels are vigilant witnesses. Matthew chapter 18 reminds us that angels behold the face of the Father in heaven, their eyes ever watchful over the lives of little ones or the children of God. With unwavering devotion, they rejoice over each soul that turns to God in repentance their voices joining in the chorus of heavenly celebration. Angels praise and celebrate God's unending love towards sinners. Luke chapter 15 details the jubilant response of angels to the repentance of a sinner. In the celestial courts, their joy knows no bounds as they witness the transformative power of God's grace, eagerly anticipating the restoration of every lost soul. In Revelation chapter 5, we see not just archangels, those closest to God, but all angels in an awe-inspiring scene, where myriads of angels encircle the throne of God, their voices raised in resounding praise to the Lamb who was slain, with voices like thunder and hearts ablaze with adoration. They proclaim the worthiness of the Saviour to receive all honour, glory and praise. We see all angels, not just archangels as fellow servants, in Revelation chapter 22, the archangel in John's vision humbly portrays himself as a fellow servant, redirecting the apostle John's worship to God alone. Though radiant with celestial splendor, the angel acknowledges its role as a fellow servant with himself, his fellow prophets, and all those who believe in and reverence the almighty creator. Colossians chapter one unveils the vast array of heavenly beings created by God's hand. Angels, archangels, cherubims, seraphim, and the living creatures all stand as testament to the sovereignty and wisdom of the divine plan, obediently carrying out God's will in the cosmic order. In the heavenly symphony of creation, archangels play a special role, their presence weaving seamlessly into the tapestry of God's redemptive plan. With humility and devotion, they serve as messengers, guardians, and worshipers, ever proclaiming the glory of the Most High and the supremacy of His Son, Jesus Christ. Friends, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video as it helps with the algorithm and in spreading God's message. Additionally, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell, because as you may know, Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right.